If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. The question instructs us to use the conservation of energy in order to solve the problem, so let's take a look at the equation for the conservation of energy. On the left side of the equation, we would have the translational kinetic energy, the rotational kinetic energy, and then the gravitational potential energy all in their final state, and then we set that equal to the same energies in their initial state. We note that the bucket initially is located at the top of the figure, and it's initially at rest, and so for the initial energy we can cancel out the kinetic energies since that bucket is at rest. Now of course after the bucket has fallen we have two types of kinetic energy. We have the translational kinetic energy of the bucket as it falls down, and then we have the rotational kinetic energy of the spool as it's spinning. So we have to include both kinetic energies in our final side of the equation. We're going to go ahead and replace the energies with their corresponding expressions. Note for the rotational kinetic energy we have the term I, which of course stands for the rotational inertia, so we have to look up the rotational inertia for the spool which we can assume to be a disk, and it turns out the rotational energy of a disk is one-half times the mass of the disk times its radius squared, so we'll go ahead and replace I with that expression. Notice also that it's going to be advantageous to replace the translational speed with its rotational counterpart, and the relationship between the two is as follows. So we're going to go ahead and replace V with the expression R times omega, omega being the rotational speed. We can subtract the term mgy sub f from both sides of the equation, and then we'll simplify the equation as follows. Notice on the right-hand side we've factored out mg, and that leaves y sub i minus y sub f. Now our goal, of course, is to solve for the angular speed, so we need to isolate omega, and maybe to do that what we can do next is multiply each term of the equation by 2. So if we did it for the first term, that's going to cancel out the 1 half, the second term will cancel out one of the 1 halves, and then the third term will have just a 2 in front of the mg. If we look carefully, we'll notice that omega squared appears in this term as well as in this term, so we can factor it out. Notice that right here we would still be left with r squared, since the r was in parentheses and that entire quantity was being squared. We can next divide both sides of the equation by this term here in parentheses, which essentially will move it over to the right side. We'll next take a look at the denominator and notice that r squared appears in both terms, so we can factor that out. And then finally we can take the square root of both sides. We can plug in the known values at this point. Notice that lowercase m was the mass of the bucket, and then the uppercase m, which is located right here, is the mass of the spool. The radius of the spool, of course, is given as well, and then g is a constant. The y sub i minus y sub f, that's essentially a change in vertical displacement, and the question states that the bucket has fallen 4 meters, so that would be that change in vertical displacement. So, when you plug in all the known values carefully, you should get an angular speed of approximately 10.9, and then the standard unit is radians per second. So this would be the correct answer. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon, and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.